What's going on? And welcome back to the Step It Up Entrepreneur Podcast. Your host, Thomas Keenan, coming at you guys today. And we're in the home office today. We're not in the official office. Uh, decided to stick here and uh, hurdle the kids and stuff. We got school starting tomorrow and we got a couple running around being crazy. So if there's noise in the background, like just deal with it. We're real live humans here. And um, <laughs> We got we got JV here, and we're going to dive into what Coach JV does in a second. But uh, you know, I want to touch on something here before I get started and, and, and do your introduction. Over the last year, year and a half, I've been on a mission to mm -hmm. kind of revamp the way that I live my lifestyle and my business. And man, I don't know what your feelings are on this, but I kind of got the sense that you're you're dialed in and you're in tune with things. You're in tune with the way that you feel inside and and some of the certain actions that you take because of the way you feel right and look man i don't know you from a hole in the wall but yes. you seem like a dialed in individual who's experienced some shit in life and yes. what i've been after is like man i've had the big business before i've had the mm -hmm. company when i had you know 28 full-time employees and i had to worry about payroll every week um after that company, I got out and I ran someone else's company for them for two years. And it was the same deal. It was like, okay, well, now we've got 30 or 40 employees. I'm sitting in the COO seat of the company. That all falls on me because I'm the leader right below the leader, yeah. if that makes sense. Yep. And I made I made good money, right? Mm -hmm. Really did. Uh, enjoyed what I did at the time. But I'm at a season in my life now where I legitimately do not want to work that hard. Mm. And... Yep. I've also made the very conscious decision to make my business work for me rather than me work for the business or around the business and, and have my schedule just be completely bongos. Um, yeah. So I've just, I've been working a lot here about on the back side of things. Like what can I yeah. dial in on the business on the back end? What can I do to still provide this tremendous amount of value to my clients and the people who come in here and work with us at the same point in time without robbing all of my time. So I, Mm. I want to be a present dad to my kids, yes. right? And um, to me, that has become more important now. At I'll be 45 in, in a month and a half, mm. 45 years of age. That is more important to me now than making the almighty dollar. Yep. And I know this, this is kind of going to transition into a lot of what you're doing with your clients. And I want to just dive in here. And dude, first off, welcome to the show. Thank you. After brother. I just went down this long-winded path of, of what's going on in my life. But Coach JV, welcome to the show. And I really appreciate you coming in here because you've got a program, you've got things, you're helping other people, and you've got a systemized step-by-step -step process that allows mm -hmm. you to help people in different areas and, and different, I guess, different stages from what yeah. your website's telling me or what they're doing. So I'd like you to come in here. Tell us a little bit about you, and then let's transition into what you're doing to help these people, and then let's just have some real good conversation. Yeah, I love it, man. I, exactly what you talked about. Our, our whole, just the whole concept of everything is freedom. I mean, what is the word freedom? I, I left corporate America in 2017 for freedom, and I yeah. bought a company. I bought a job, <laughs> and I was working 18 to 19 hours a day wasn't there for my kids. I was not in a good position. And so uh, I love what you just said. And over the past probably 36 months, what I did is I did some deep soul searching. And it's like, you know, my son is eight years old now. He was five back then. My daughter was uh, 17 going on 18. Um, and like you, I'm 48 years old. I, I wanted to be present. And I didn't leave corporate America uh, to be trapped. I left corporate America for freedom. And so as I evolved as a human being wanting to be present for my kids, I needed to evolve my businesses because we run a bunch of different companies and it's like, man, is this, what is this about? Like, why are we doing this intentionally? Why are we doing this? Right. I, I do it for freedom. And so what we did is we designed as we went through this process, our company evolved into a freedom company and teaching people through finances, through spirituality, through mentality, through exercise, fitness, how to live a free life, how to create balance. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, I went through the same process, man. And so I, I went from the left side of the cash flow quadrant, moving to the right side, building systems, processes, structure. And yeah. I'd never thought this was possible, but it, now I'm now where I'm at now is I'm off at two o'clock every single day. I'm off every weekend with my kids, even though I do run a, a, quite a few companies. Um, yeah. But the key to it is scaling. Like you talked about, you know, being a C, COO. I brought on a CEO, a CFO, a, a board, and we we build basically like the hardest transition for me was to get my ego out of it <laughs> when I was in because I you know I'm running the companies and I'm like I I 
of course I can do it the best because it's, mm -hmm. I built the company, right? But you have to step back. And when I realize that I have certain powerful skills and if I bring on people that have the, uh, fulfill my weaknesses, mm -hmm. that's when it changed for me. I started bringing people on, brought a customer service team, a COO, CFO, and we have the same vision, man. It's all about, you know, I'm 48. My son is eight. My daughter's 20. I want to be there for my kids. I want to be there for my grandkids. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think you can have both. I really, really do. And so for me, it's heavy on the investment side of it. Uh, but yeah, we've been through a journey though, man. In 2020, uh, I left corporate America in 2017, finally got the business going. It was like Cinderella story. You know, nobody thought I was going to make it, you know, 85% of small business <laughs> fail, 15% yeah. make it. Well, we made it a uh, 15% and then we were heading towards the, the seven figure and then boom, pandemic shut us down. Yep, got it. And I was like, that was where the, the soul searching came in. I was like, wait a minute. I said, I will never put my family in a position ever again, where someone can take my ability to way to take care of my family. Yep. And so I, I lost everything. I lost all my earned income. I lost it. I had my investments. I didn't touch them. I actually moved back in with my parents, man, at 43 years old. I said, Hey, packed up my kids. Can I move back in with you guys? And I said, this will never happen again. And I made it my mission to understand how number one, how does money work? Number two, how to take money and multiply it. And then from there, build systems and processes so that I can mm -hmm. be free for my kids. So I think, I feel like we can have it all, you know? Yeah, dude, I totally get it. And I, uh, I understand it, you know, um, I want to get back to one thing you mentioned here in a mm. second, because it, it just reminded me of some yeah. of the, the past reading and education stuff I've done. And it tells me you've gone down the same path as well. We'll get there. Um, but I feel what you just said about losing it and almost, you know, pretty mm. much that rock bottom moment, yep. um, you know, for me, and I've been very open and transparent with it. Yeah. If you haven't noticed, it's kind of the guy I just, I just have speak what's on my mind. I got nothing to hide. You wanted the good, the bad, the ugly in between. I was, I'll show it all to you. Yeah. Right? And um, the, over the past year and a half, you know, I really struggled on the personal side. Mm. You know, I, I went through a, a divorce with my ex. Mm. I've got three beautiful children uh, with oh. this woman. She's still a great person. I, I, I care for her, respect her. At the same mm. point in time, it was it was no longer right for us. Yeah. And coming to that that realization, it was like, oh my god. And I, my mindset is like. It, it, clarity breeds decision, right? And when mm. we remove certain influences, certain stuff, some certain yeah. things out of our lives, we get a little bit more connected, a little bit more spiritual, religious, yeah. whatever is, you know, whatever floats your boat as a human. Sure. We we sort we we connect better and we start mm. to listen more to the intuition inside of us. We listen to the, the, the good little voice chirping on the shoulder. Yeah. And sometimes it tells us things that are harsh. Yes. And we have to pay attention to listen to them. So that I'm going through this season of my life and I, I realize certain things that I have this clarity. And clarity breeds decision and clarity bred the decision for me that, hey, this marriage, this union between man and woman is no longer the right thing for either of us. Mm. And that caused, you know, a really tough 12 to 18 months to follow, obviously, because there's just there's businesses involved, yeah. there's assets involved, there's children involved, there's a 20 year relationship here involved. Yeah. So going down that path was similar for me. I'm going to equate that to you having to go move mm -hmm. back in with mom and dad. Mm -hmm. Right. And mm -hmm. um, literally, like I said, you know, at the opening of this podcast, we've been working on the systems and processes to yeah. have the business work for me. So I can be super present with the kids. Yes. Cause that's ultimately what matters to me. All right. So now before I yeah. forget, cause I'm ADHD like crazy. <laughs> uh, yeah, a couple minutes ago, you mentioned the cash flow quadrant. Mm-hmm. Uh, which tells me you are a, a well-read individual and you've definitely read up on some Robert Kiyosaki. Yes. So uh, for the listeners here, I'd like if you could please to dive into briefly what the cash flow uh, quadrant is and why it's mm -hmm. so important and why everyone should know what it is. Yeah, it's super important. I mean, there's uh, on the other side of it, I'll talk about what is money, right? So when, yeah. when there's, there's levels to the wealth game, right? So it's like you either you're trading time for money Next is you manage people that make money. Next is you manage managers who make money. Next is you have senior level managers and you have a C CEO, right? And there's people who manage the richest people in the world's money, right? And so the key to this is to get yourself out of trading time for money. But most people go, okay, well, I don't want to trade time for any more money anymore. So I want to start a business. Then they go into entrepreneurship or a business and they actually don't scale it. And so now they're still trading time for money and they're in the same position. Well, with their they money- typically trade 
more time for less money. <laughs> more time for less money. Yeah, it's actually, it's almost easier to have a job, to be honest yeah. with you. Now, it, what the key is to the money that we get, right, is we want to move that into investing. So that's moving the cash flow. So what I did is, I'll just take myself. I was trading time for money. I went down and I became an entrepreneur. And then I was, I bought basically a job. And so from there, I was like, man, the only way for me to move up to the right corners of the cash flow quadrant is create systems and processes where I could scale myself out of now trading time for money. So I hired other people to trade time for money for me. And then I went up into the leadership position. And then with the money that I was receiving from the companies, I moved it down into the investment position. Mm -hmm. So what we started to do is not only did we uh, stop trading time for money, we scaled our businesses, but we took the money that we were earning and not didn't buy houses and Lambos and all that stuff, but we put it into investments. And then we took it a step further. I call it the, I, I use the, the risk pyramid. So what I did is I went into high risk, high speculative assets. As it went up the risk pyramid, I pulled it down and I brought it down into tier one capital. So not only did we move out of trading time for money, we took the money that we made and we took the money to invest it so we can free up more time. So eventually, if you start to do that, if you take you, you you're now uh, scaled up. The money that you get, you put it into assets. Once it profits, you put it into something that will multiply, right? It's richest man in Babylon. And so we created the system and that's how we create our system. And so we call it the 5P framework. And from there, it's like now we're focused on, I'm, I have a 10 year vision for, you know, I'm 48, about 58 going on 60. I, I, in my vision, I will be able to walk away from all of this, right? Mm -hmm. um, or be able to sell it, sell the businesses. Um, and we do that by seeing money as a tool, understanding that all mo all money in the system is debt, especially in America right now. America is buried in debt, 100%. We have more debt than we have income in the system. The G7 has more debt than has income. And so right now, if you're getting cash for working, you're literally getting something that is someone else's debt. That's it. And so you have to take that money and multiply it. And so that's what we, we teach people. It's like, I had to go through the process first myself and now it finally makes sense. It's like, I went from broke on my parents' couch to financially free now. And now we're working for generational wealth. That's the key. Yep. Love it. So, mm -hmm. and I know this is a loaded question, uh, but what, what, what does investment look like for you? Mm -hmm. And like, like, where do you, where do you park the money so it can multiply? Exactly. Uh, yep. And the other question, this is a step before that, right? And and I, I run into this often with my clients where someone comes to me, they've been in business for a couple of years. And like, as we discussed before, like I, I help them a lot with the operations and dialing in the systems and processes. Yeah, I get a lot of people who come to me that aren't necessarily ready to work with me because I'm not cheap to work with. And, I, and yep. I'm very open about that. Yep. Um, but when people come in and they're like, hey, I'm struggling, I'm I'm not making any money, I'm not pulling any payroll, I, I need help in my business. Yes, you definitely need help. Um, but the struggle there is they're mm. not making enough money to make ends meet. Mm. At what point is the right choice, the right time for them to say, okay, I need to take a small percentage and put it aside? Mm. That, or do that, they well, need to sure up the foundation of the house first before setting any money right. aside? Great question. You should always pay yourself first. Always, always, always. That's what I tell other entrepreneurs. So we have, so we have six eco, I call them ecosystems companies. We have six companies and every single company that we have, any ones that are in profit, we always pull money aside. So this is the way I look at it. So we always build our companies to, to sell, like as if they're in, and then I imagine that these companies are not going to be here in 10 years. So when you have profit, what most people do is you want to reinvest back in your companies, of course, but you should always pull money out to secure yourself. So we built a moat around ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. So as the earned income went up, um, I pulled off the table for my retirement, right? And so for, for example, what I did is I, I big into cryptocurrency, heavy into mm -hmm. cryptocurrency. Um, it's very, very speculative. I always tell people it's not a get rich quick. You're not, everybody thinks that it sees this as a lottery. Yeah. That's how you can get, I hate saying this, but wealthy in a short amount of time is boom and bust cycles, right? So if yeah. you understand a boom and bust cycle that it is going to bust and nothing goes straight up, you get out before everybody comes in, right? Mm -hmm. So I got into cryptocurrency and that's one of my, my big expertise. So from cryptocurrency, high speculative, high return, I put quite a bit in there. As it mm -hmm. goes up, I pull profits as everybody's coming in. I pull it down the risk pyramid. I use um, insurance. I use specifically Index Universal Life. So I do the infinity banking concept. Yep, so I it. use insurance. I use precious metals, um, silver. Uh, and then we're going into multifamily real estate. So we diversify. So not only am I diversified in cryptocurrency, I'm diversified in other asset classes. Mm -hmm. So we got multifamily. We're going into multifamily. We have single family. Um, insurance so the reason why i use insurance because i like to secure my principal so rule number one don't lose money rule number two warren buffett 
follow rule number one. <laughs> so when I pull those profits, because like when the stock market came collapsing down just recently, in our in my IUL policies, I have a guaranteed principal. So it stops at my principal, right? Mm -hmm. So once the market comes back, it just starts returning again. And so I, I think it's important for people, especially entrepreneurs, because you're so buried in your business. Yeah. We always see the business as our end all be all. It, mm -hmm. But what if it's not here in five years? Yeah. Well, the, the economy right now, I mean, we're feeling it 19% of inflation since 2020. I mean, we have mm -hmm. Three of our ecosystems right now have a huge, we have a big building here and stuff and the conference room and all that stuff. And we're filling it, man. Our rent went up dramatically over the last three years. Uh, it's more expensive for our, our company vehicles, the gas. And so you have to prepare as if the company won't be here in the future for yourself. And I think uh, uh, talking to entrepreneurs is you got to make sure you pay yourself first. And, and even if you're an employee, you should always pay yourself first every single time. Yeah. Yeah. So what does what does paying yourself first look like for you? What are you advising your clients to do? Is it, you know, hey, I'm opening up another bank account in another bank, another another place, and I'm just automatically moving money over there? Are you manually going to the bank and removing cash and sticking it under your mattress? Like what do you what yeah. are you telling people to do? Yeah. So for me, I don't keep a lot of cash. I think cash is trash just because, I mean, if, if all if all money in the system is debt, uh, somebody everybody should follow is Ray Dalio. He is phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal economist. Um, mm -hmm. But cash is trash. So I don't keep a lot of cash. Um, anytime money hits and I I um, automate, I was going to say automate, <laughs> automate uh, all of my investing. I just I set it and forget it. So for example, cryptocurrency every single day, there's, um, I'm dollar cost averaging into buying cryptocurrency. So I have a little bit that goes out every day. Yeah. Um, I have my insurance policies, obviously that the premiums are paid every single month. And then I, I open up a separate bank account. I call it the freedom account where I put money in there to bet, mm -hmm. uh, to build up, to buy real estate. Um, so you should always, uh, what's the word automate <laughs> automate your investing because we just as especially as americans we're mm -hmm. you know everything's so convenient everything is so easy it's like especially having a debit card if you yeah. don't automate it then it's you're not going to save it most people won't right some people are disciplined but most people when it's in their bank account you want to get it out of sight that's that's my rule it's like yeah. i get paid on wednesday and friday for my companies mm -hmm. and it's like it goes in boom it's out of sight and so one of the biggest things for me too is that a rule that i created for myself is that basically i have a net for debts and non-negotiables like mm -hmm. how much it costs for all the non-negotiables in my life and the debts right so there's mm -hmm. a certain amount i need to make every month i won't buy things i want until all my assets can pay for the net once it can pay for the net, then I'm going to buy the Lambos and the cool shit. And so, you know, once I get there, you know, we're getting close. We're probably about 24 months away. But it was a rule that I created for myself because I realized when I started making quite a bit of money, um, I started to buy shit. I was like, yeah. I bought a track Corvette, $100,000 Corvette. And it was like, what are you doing, dude? You're literally, yeah. that's that's what made you broke. <laughs> like, So I stopped and I sold the Corvette, bought a property. And I was like, dude, you got to check yourself because... I hadn't fully rewired my brain there. I'd never had wealth in my family ever. I'd never been taught about wealth. And the first thing someone usually will do when they get a large amount of wealth is go buy a really nice car or something like that. But if I want, <laughs> yeah, if I want that type of car or I own multiple companies, I buy, yeah. we have a really nice car out there. It's, or it's a, it's a 6,000, it's a BMW SUV that's paid through by the company. We got 80% tax write-off for that, yeah. you know, so in LLC in starting a company is powerful too, for people for tax write-offs, all kinds of stuff. But yeah, so I just, it's, I think auto automating everything is the key because out of sight, out of mind. Yeah. Love it. That's awesome, yeah. man. And I, I do agree with you totally. Um, there's some really good solid books in and around mm -hmm. that. I mean, you know, we, we, we touched on, you know, the, the Robert Kiyosaki rich that mm -hmm. stuff before with the cash flow quadrant. Mm -hmm. uh, if anyone hasn't read his stuff, I definitely recommend they go do, you'll get a different yeah. perspective on it. And exactly what you said, you know, you said debts, um, that's before. Uh, debts and non-negotiables. Yes. Yes. Yep. You, you, so one of the concepts he talks about in, in, I don't remember which one of his books, maybe it was multiple of them. I, I read them years ago. Um, was buying assets and having the asset pay for the toy that you want. And that's exactly yeah. what you're living up to right now. And I think that's awesome. So that's kudos it. to you, man. Yeah, it's like it, people, it, your whole life will change when you start thinking like that. It's not that you can't have the toys. It's just imagine, imagine, say, well, I always tell because we saw it in crypto from 2020 to 2022, I made more money in crypto than I would have made in my whole life as an executive at the bank. Yeah. It was crazy, but I but I pulled profits on the way up. So I was able to to 
diversify into insurance, into assets and all that stuff. And that's, that's what started my wealth cycle. But I saw so many people buy cars and big houses and then it came collapsing down. Mm -hmm. And then they had to maintain those big houses, those nice cars in the bear market, right? So they you yeah. want people need to get out of a vertical strategy. Go to school, get a job, get a 401k, uh, run a business, be in a job, have crypto. We should diversify outside. And that rule that you just talked about, it's it, what a powerful thing. Imagine driving a Lambo that you don't even pay for. Yeah. You have a renter that's paying for the Lambo. And so, like, oh, I want a, a wake boat so bad me and my kids want a wake boat and i'm like my kids are like when are we getting that they, so i train now the key is i'm training my kids so yeah. we you know we'll rent a boat on the weekend and go out and have fun but mm -hmm. we're gonna get a wake boat but these things are freaking expensive man and yeah. so i said hey they're about 150k to 200 000, the one that we want yeah. Yeah. and i said we need to get an asset that will pay for that so my kids are like when are we getting the rental property when are we getting the rental property so it's training their brain at a very young age that you don't buy things you want mm -hmm. you you buy things you want with assets and yep. so that's something and something with my daughter too. Um, she's 20 now when she graduated high school and, I, and I'm, I'm not against education at all. I have education. That's not what sure. I'm saying, but she was like, dad, she sat me and her mom down. She's like, dad, I have no interest in going to college. And she said, mm -hmm. I said, I respect that. She said, I don't want to waste your guys' money. She had all her graduation money. She was, I want to do what you do. And I was like, okay. So she got into the capital markets at 18. She yep. started her insurance policy. We started her insurance policy. Um, and I'm teaching her the opposite. So I said, mm -hmm. Until you're 30, I want you to invest 30% of every dime you make. I don't want you to accumulate. Everybody's, I don't, you're not going to go buy a car on debt. You're not going to get a house on debt. After 30, you're going to have so many assets that you literally can go buy. You you're literally have so many assets that you can live off your money, yeah. right? So that's what we're doing. So we're, and she's already got, I mean, she's got, has more than most adults um invested in, because what they teach us, go to school, get a job, get your first yeah. car, get a mortgage. And then we get a job and we're trying to pay that off the rest of our lives. So I'm doing the opposite with her. Um, and, and it's pretty cool to see too, because she's like, she can do whatever she wants. She's 20 yeah. years old. So, yeah, that's awesome. You know, that goes back to what we kind of opened up with in, in that whole freedom mm -hmm. aspect. Mm -hmm. And I, I really wish that this was taught more. Um, yeah. I, well, then again, not as many people know about this as we, we want them to as well. And I definitely fell into the trap of, you know, go to school, start the, the job, go, go to the career. Finally, I got married, buy the house, yep. right? Sell that one because you're making more money now. Let's upgrade yeah, to the nicer yeah. one. All right. I, I went down that whole path. Me too. Um, but yeah, man, like totally think about it. It's 20 years old. By the mm -hmm. time she's 30, realistically, she does what she wants. That is mm -hmm. the ultimate freedom to yep. get up when I want work when I want or invest when I want, mm -hmm. when I choose. If I don't feel mm -hmm. like doing work today, I don't. It doesn't mean you're not a productive human or you're not a contributing member to society. Right. You're just doing it on your own terms, how yes. you want to do it and when you yeah. want to do it. That yeah. to me is the ultimate freedom and the ultimate power. Absolutely. And then also to, to talking to, to parents' heart is I'll, I'll give a, an aspect of my daughter's 20. My, my son is eight. So I, we set up insurance policies for both of them. And they're not called retirement policies. You can't say that, but you can retire tax-free with tax code 7702A. So I set up the same policies for them. Um, this, is the, this is the importance for parents if you have young kids. So my son is eight. My daughter's 20. There's so money compounds every seven years at 10%, right? right. So basically my son I only have to save 300 a month for my mm -hmm. daughter, 700 a month to have 1.6 million at 62, the same age. So mm -hmm. one compounding cycle is double the money. So like if any parents are listening to this, like get your kids started super, super early. Like my son, when he's 18, he'll have well over six figures already and that will compound. And another thing too, is I'm teaching them all this stuff. For example, my, my daughter calls me, she jokes all the time. She's like, yeah, you're the richest, poorest man I've ever met. Cause it's like, I said, we're living mm -hmm. below our means until, until it just, it, it, it there's so much coming in that it doesn't, yeah. you know, then it doesn't, it doesn't make sense to not live below our means. Yep. I love so, it, man. Yeah. So what, give me an idea of the companies and what you're doing and how you're helping people in those different areas. Yeah, thank you. So I, it's uh, we have what's called the three T, like T is in Tom Warrior Academy, and that's basically our ecosystem. And so basically, what we do is we teach people financial literacy, financial mm -hmm. discipline, how to invest, like where where do we put our money, what do we do, how to earn, 
how to protect and compound. And so also within there, we teach people how to get, we always say how to get your shit together, right? So we have our 120 day challenge because it's not just about wealth, it's about health. And yeah. so once you can get your heart and brain in alignment, manifestation, vision creation, goal setting, but also you're healthy, that's yeah. the key to wealth. So we teach people how to like, cause there's a lot of things we haven't been taught about how the, how the brain works, how the mind works. Mm -hmm. So uh, within the Warrior Academy, by the time a person's done, they have, you know, they've learned financial literacy, financial discipline, uh, health discipline, fitness discipline. Uh, they also learn uh, good, powerful skill setting, uh, goal setting techniques, things like that. And we've also created an ecosystem too, where we all invest together as well. So it's like a, a like-minded, a community of like-minded people. So if you find yourself like, looking for a community or trying to figure all this stuff out, we kind of synthesize it all into one community. Yeah. Um, so it has crypto business, um, everything inside of there. Yeah. Love it. You know, mm -hmm. you, you touched on some really key aspects there. Um, stuff that I didn't figure out and, and nailed down until the, the later areas of life for me, you know, as we mentioned before, I'm almost 45. Um, I've been a small business owner since I'm 21, mm -hmm. sort of I really early. And, you know, went down this path and, and like I, I've literally lived the lifestyle of the 20 hour days and sometimes the 24 hour days mm -hmm. yeah. of just grind, 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 because that's what I thought the business required of mm -hmm. me. And also looking back at it, you got this whole ego thing that's thrown in. You're the best. I'm the best yeah. at what I do. Get out of my yeah. way. You yeah. don't do it as good as I do. Right. Um, but in doing that, you actually program the mind. Yes. And that programming, which is accepted by society, by the way, because mm -hmm. other, other people in society, no, no, you're going to work hard. You're going to be a business owner. You got to work and you're going to give everything up. <laughs> it's so crazy that that's acceptable because that caused me all of the internal issues. And when I say mm -hmm. internal issues, I'm talking health. I'm talking yeah. fitness. I'm talking, um, we'll talk energy. You can talk uh, spirituality. All yeah. of those things went on the back burner. Yeah. Right. The physical physicality of me too. Yeah. All that went on the back burner so I could go work these 20 hour days mm. and not be present to my spouse at the time, not show up and, and be there for my kids when needed, mm. not show up and be there for my immediate family when they really needed me because yeah. business was more important. Right. Like I've gone down and made all those mistakes and it, it wasn't until, man, I don't know about you, but I always had this sense, this feeling since the day I was as far back as I can remember, that there's something more to this life than what, what oh, we have yeah. in front of us. Yes. And I've always been after this, like, well, how do we know more? How do we get more of that? And at first it was the career path and the career locked me up for a long time because I love what I did. Right. Mm -hmm. And then it was, okay, well, now I've got this big opportunity in front of me in one of my companies. And I know that I don't have the skill set to take it to the next step or the next level. Mm. So let's go find someone who's been there, done yep. that. That yeah. step right there was the tip of the domino that sent me down this self-development path. Yes. I don't know. Shit, dude. I was, I think I was, uh, I was 10, 11, 12 years ago, something like that. Wow. And, and that path right there at first, it was like, oh my God, well, you have all this crazy information being thrown at you. Like it, it's, it's like drinking from a fire hose. You don't know what to do, who to listen to analysis paralysis kicks in and you're like, oh, I'm not going to do shit. Cause I don't know which one of these is the right thing to do first. Right. <laughs> Yeah. So you go down this path further and further and further. And then I start, you know, you, you, you start to network more. For me, it was joining a couple of high-end masterminds and mm -hmm. getting around like-minded individuals. And then I, I got to see a lot of these people in person mm -hmm. at regular meetups a couple of times, you know, uh, uh, across the year. And I noticed something about the people who seem to be at the top of those groups. Yeah. I'm like, huh, they seem to have energy for days. Mm-hmm. Most of them are in pretty damn good shape. Yep. Mm -hmm. Their mindset is definitely different than I'll even call it um, average Americans, which I don't want to put anyone down, but it's just a, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, I am now drawn more to these people. So now the more mm -hmm. time I get to hang out and spend with these people, I want to dig and probe. What is it that you're doing that makes you this good at what you do? Yep. And when you peel back the layers of the onion, it's, oh, I you know have a morning routine. Mm -hmm. um, I get physical every day. Yep. Uh, you know, I take care of and monitor what goes in this pie hole of mine. Mm -hmm. You know, it's and that yeah. can that can mean a lot of different things for different people, depending upon, you know, um, what you're doing, what you're going after. But learning this stuff, it was like, oh, OK, so all mm -hmm. of this stuff's connected. 
<laughs> yes, yes. That was the big like moments like, oh, wait. So you're telling me if I dial in mm -hmm. the physical aspect of me and I watch what's going in my pie hole, that I'm going to perform better in business. Yes. I'm going to perform better at home. I'm going to perform better with the kids. Yes. The answer is yes. Mm -hmm. So for those people who are listening right now, who are like, man, who are these two clowns over there? One guy's got, <laughs> got cut off sleeves. He's showing the gun. The other guy's just a big, thick meathead with a hairy Love beard. It. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, it's all, it, you said it, it's all one. Like that's what people don't realize. You can have it all. Yeah. Like that's one thing that I realized that, you know, I'm going on 40, going to be 49, coming up on 50. And I realized this last couple of years, I've realized you can have it all because you, you nailed it. What It was like, I'd be in really good shape and I'd be broke or I'd be really wealthy and I would be getting sloppy. Right. And I was like this last couple of years, I've been like, no, you can have it all, man. You can have a fit mind. You can be spiritual. You can, I go to Peru twice a year and I spend 14 days in Peru, like no contact. Like I literally disappear for that's, you know, almost 30 days a year where I disappear. My goal is to within a year, be able to go to Peru for 30 days, like no contact, like with yeah. um, you know, my kids and stuff, but, but the businesses and, and you do that by, I felt that it, you do it by empowering others, right? So when you build a good product or a good business, then you bring people into it, right? At first, I realize this is one I'll encourage if an entrepreneur is there right now. At first, it feels like you're gonna, because you're, you know, you're you're making the money, and then all you kind of got to give up a little bit. You got to give up a little bit of power, empower yeah. other people. But the more I do that, the wealthier I become. It's like in every business, the more that I give up a little bit of equity to bring somebody in that's more talented, or I realize, hmm, there's a lot to that, especially when people have ownership. We have an insurance arm of our company of, of a separate insurance. And that is like the whole business model is is empowering other people, like bringing on other agents to tell me. And it's like, I don't think I've written a policy in like six months, but I have a bunch of teammates that are doing it and they're making good money. They're happy. Um, yeah, I could make all the money. But having other people, it just multiplies. And I think a lot of people get stuck in this thing where I got to do it all myself. Yeah. That's one sure path to stress, anxiety, and getting sick. But also, too, like I was just talking to my partner about this this weekend. I was talking to her and I was like, listen, like I have to make myself a priority. That has to be it. And that's, you know, I love doing sauna, ice baths, meditation, breathing, all that stuff. And as, being honest, sometimes it's hit, sometimes it falls off. Yep. And but that can't. It has to be the number one priority. Mm -hmm. Like that's why they say on a plane, put your mask on first before you put your child's mask on. Yeah. You know, what good are you if you're not healthy? What good are you if you're not? Um, it's all it's all here. I love what you're saying, man. Yeah. No, I get it, man. Big time. Um, you know, that kind of goes back to the list of non-negotiables that you have you talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think it's super important that people do it. So, hey, these are my expenses. Some of mm -hmm. these are necessary, you know, whether you've got rent or a mortgage, you have to have a place to live. You have to have a vehicle. If you have a, a car payment, you're going to have insurances on these things. You're going to have right. to, if you have children, you've got to take care of your kids. That's non-negotiable right. to me. Um, like for instance, one of the things non-negotiable in my life is, is definitely a gym membership. Like, no, yep. I, that's not going anywhere. I don't mm -hmm. care if I got to rub two nickels together to keep that membership going. Like that's, yep. that's there because that helps me in multiple different areas and facets of my life. Yes. So yep. give me an example, if you don't mind, uh, yep. JV, like what's, what are some non-negotiables for you when yes. you go down and make that list? Yeah. So I'll, I'll start with the, the first thing that I came up with is, is uh, Ray Dalio's book, Principles. It's a really good book. He's an economist too, but he's also a great leader and coach. So the first thing non-negotiable is having principles. So for me, I define my principles in business, integrity, honesty, and uncompromising belief in God. So any ecosystem that I own, all of them I'm owner of, but I have to be able to be around people where I can express my belief in Christ and God. You can talk about whatever you want. I don't care if you believe in Buddha, sure. whatever, I support you. But so integrity, honesty, and uncompromising belief in God. For for family, it's peace, freedom, and family structure. So those are all non-negotiable. So all decisions go through a decision model. So when somebody yep. comes to me for a business, is it going to disrupt my peace, freedom, or family structure? If the answer is yes, hard no. Other non-negotiables for me is, is uh, exercise every single day, Some, even if it's a walk or mm -hmm. uh, stretching or Tai Chi or whatever it is. But, you know, I love doing HIIT training, lifting weights. Um, 
for me, sauna or steam room every single day. It's like a non-negotiable, um, some sort of a fasting. I fast every single day, either for me, it's minimum of 16 hours. I like to do a, a 20 hour fast. So those are, these things are non-negotiables. And also another thing too, is my non-negotiables is writing down my goals. And, and lastly, most important prayer for me, like that's a non-negotiable. It's wake up, pray, pray over my food, pray yep. before bed. And these are things that I've just lived by these simple things. And they've, really changed my life and then people yeah. when they see that you're consistent in those things mm -hmm. it does develop respect like people are like man you really do that we travel a lot for our companies i'm up every morning i'm praying i'm exercising i'm you know doing i follow my fasting protocol i write down my goal I have my book my goal book every single day with me uh, yeah. so those are my non-negotiables but I, I would encourage everybody to develop principles because i feel like if you don't believe in something you're going to fall for anything you know yeah yeah it's mm -hmm. so true yeah um I'm big on the principles too. Another word, another term mm -hmm. thrown around often is is values or core values. Yeah, yes. uh, very similar. Um, and that's that's big for me too. It's like, hey, these are the values that follow me in business. Mm -hmm. Always, these are the ones that are here at home. And there's overlap in some of them too. For yes, sure. big time. Uh, so one of the values for me is communication. Mm -hmm. right? Open, direct, authentic conversation at all times. That's what mm -hmm. I I opened when we were before we yep. hit the record button here. I'm like, dude, yep. we're gonna have an open, authentic, direct conversation. You're yes. like, cool. Like, I love it. That's one of my values that carries mm -hmm. through. And just like you, it's non negotiable for me. And this is what I live mm -hmm. out every day inside the house mm -hmm. and inside the business. Awesome. Right. And from a communication standpoint, I think it's important for for. Um, People, yes, just general population to communicate well, that's definitely key. But especially for entrepreneurs and especially for people in leadership positions, yep. we have to be effective communicators. And yep. you know, you talk about compounding before in the sense of money before. Yep. I'm gonna give you compounding in the sense of communication, if you don't mind. Yeah. Um, so my theory on this and what I've seen live out in my own life is the more we practice one form of communication, the better we are at other forms of communication. Yeah. And vice versa. So most commonly, if you're in the business realm, you're going to be sending an email here and there to people. You're going to be picking up the phone and talking to someone. You're going to send someone a text message. Yeah. Cool. That's conversation. Then we get into more of the intentional stuff, you know, writing articles or magazine articles, writing yeah. blog posts, writing social media posts to express who you are and also yep. promote your business every so often. Right. Uh, writing mm -hmm copy for websites, landing pages, things that you're going to use yeah. to market your business. And I know you know what I'm talking about because I see mm -hmm. your ClickFunnels award behind you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So all of these things here prep us for the next level. So the mm -hmm. next level in my case was, hey, let's go write a book. Cool. Yep. Let's go write the book. Writing the book makes you a more effective communicator. Yes. Writing the book prepped me for speaking from stage and podcasting. The more podcasting I do, the more confident I get when it comes to speaking to a small mm. group or a large room full of other people that I, that we, we, we like to do life with. Yeah. Right? So all of this stuff is interrelated. And there's a compounding effect, in my opinion, when mm -hmm. it comes to communication. One form of communication, do it over and over and over and over again. Consistency yes. right, is eventually going to compound and help you out in other areas of communication. Yes. Yeah. I love it. You compound. I always, people always ask, well, how did you get to where you're at? And like, you know, I wrecked my life 17 years ago. I say I accessed new knowledge, new information. I acted on that information and I held that energy for a long enough period of time to make it my reality. And so it's just like a consistently, consistently with discipline, did those activities over and over. Even if I couldn't see it within the physical reality, I'm like, if I do this for a long enough period of time, eventually it will be my unconscious behavior. And yeah. so I think that's important too. Like you said, like I, I remember when I first did my first podcast in 2017, I had my own podcast and I, um, I, I listened to it. It was so fun. I remember I had like a PowerPoint <laughs> slide up on the wall and, uh, you know, I do a lot of content every single day, videos and stuff. And, and I would, I would edit, record, start over. Like I don't edit any of my videos anymore. Nope. I'm just like, <laughs> it's just, you know, I just commute I love it. You're so right. Because it's like, I needed yeah. that because it's like, if you just do something long enough, you will, uh, you will master it. Right. There's a great yeah. book called outliers. Um, mm -hmm. for it. it's a uh, 10,000 hours of mastery. It's like, and it's funny, my social blew up around the 10,000 hours. It took years to do like when people come to me, well, JB, how do I do this? How do I do that? And I'm like, I'm like, I, for three years, I posted 17 times a day. Mm -hmm. And then eventually it just, just exploded. It was like, people like, Oh, overnight success. I'm like, Oh, I have to consider yeah. 
three years, 17 times a day, never stopping. Nobody was watching. Nobody was listening Two people yeah. on my lives. Right. And so for, to encourage people, you just have to keep going. You just yeah. got to keep going. And then also too, like, make sure that it's, um, I always, I always tell people like the three levels, high, highest levels of frequency are authenticity, gratitude, and unconditional love. So if you be authentic, like this is truly who I am. I show up to, you know, with million dollar, multi-million dollar clients like that. I, I wear a tank top every day and Birkenstocks and hippie dippy pants. I'm like, I'm just, I, I run, I'm a, I run million dollar ecosystems, but it's like, to me, yeah. it's like, this feels free to me. Like I want to, yep. and people respect that. It's like, this is who I am. Oh, you got to dress to impress. Mm -hmm. hey, if you feel good when you dress up, do it, man. Do your thing. Yeah. Like if that makes you feel good, this makes me yeah. feel good. And yeah, I think dude, I'm with you. Yeah. I'm so with you, you know, um, there, there's a time and a place for putting some nicer clothes on sure. here and there. Sure. there. There definitely is. But yeah. as you see me here today, dude, mm -hmm. I got a, I got a black t-shirt on. You mm -hmm. can't see that I'm wearing shorts, but trust me, yeah. unless it is ridiculously cold, mm -hmm. which happens here like one week out of the year, yeah. I am not wearing pants. Like yeah. I'm going to be in shorts. Right. Yeah. And like, this is just, I call it my uniform. Like everyone yep. in my family knows like, oh, dad's got his uniform on right now. Yeah. Like <laughs> this is how I'm comfortable and how I'm going to show up. Yep. And yeah. It took me a really long time of, of, you know, falling into the trap of listening to others. No, this is how you're supposed to do it. And I never really felt right or comfortable mm -hmm. or confident in me and what I was wearing. Yeah. You couple the mindset training, you couple the reading over the years, you couple the podcast consumption, you couple the going in and doing the work yourself. Mm -hmm. You couple that with getting physical and getting stronger, both mentally and physically. And yeah. now this confidence just radiates from a person because you can't hide it anymore. Plus, I also right. feel really comfortable in what I'm wearing. That just makes it even better. Yes. Right. Yeah. That's who you be, man. Not what you're wearing. And it's like, if you feel good in what you're like, I, you know, I wear beads and all this stuff. You're like, Oh, you know, they, and it's, it's great too, because it causes the, all the haters make my algorithm go up. <laughs> They're like <laughs> this dude, man, I'll be on the thing like, they, cause they help my algorithm. I love the haters, man. They're like, keep hating, keep hating, please. Yeah. Like, Oh, he's got another necklace on. And it's like, for me, like I wear Jesus clothing and yeah. I just, my point behind this is, is I, I truly believe in um, Gary Vay said this, and I want to steal this from him, but he said, often, when I heard him say this, I really dove into it. It was authenticity is the new currency. Mm -hmm. um, and it just creates freedom, man. Every night I go to bed, there's no character here. Like, this is what I do. This is who I am. That if you meet me on the streets, I'm the exact same person. And that helped me a lot, too, because then I'll be transparent. When I first went in, I left banking, went into this entrepreneurial, trying to be an influencer, podcaster, and all that stuff. And it wasn't working out for the first three years. I was trying to be somebody. I was trying to, I always tell people, I was looking for everybody, and I couldn't know, I couldn't find anybody. When I found myself, everybody found me. Mm -hmm. Right when I found myself, we went viral. It's like, all of a sudden, I was like, dude, this is what I do, man. I travel to Peru. I do plant medicines. I do all, and then people are like, Holy shit. He's been, and I was so afraid to be honest. I'm like, but this is what I do though. This is like, this is what I do. And it was like, once I started and then I just felt relaxed. And then I, once I felt relaxed, people felt more comfortable around me and I felt more yeah. comfortable around skin. And so I just encourage everybody to be truly authentic. And it's a scary thing because our whole world has been built into this facade, right? You got to be like this, you got to be like that, but everybody's uniquely built for a reason, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So, Hey, um, I got a question for you and, and, and it's totally open to you if you want to dive into sure. this. Um, you want to talk about plant medicine? I would love to, man. Yeah. All right, yeah. Let's roll. I'm yeah. well versed in plant medicine, sir. And I'm yeah. very open about that too. Yeah. Uh, it's one of the reasons that I currently do what I do and I'm as present mm -hmm. as I am with my kids because Me of too, what I've learned yes. while in the medicine. Yes. Um, what was it like for you? When did you discover it? When did you have an inkling, like a want, like, Hey, I want to go experience this. And yeah. what was that first experience like for you? Oh, thank you for asking, man. Yeah. Same thing with me. Like, I'll just give you like what the, my daughter said to me recently, she, she asked me about plant medicines. She knows I do them. Um, and she said, I, she, she was kind of like, I think she was hinting she wanted to do them eventually. She's 20. And I said, well, why would you bring that up? She said, because you're a completely different person. Mm -hmm. Like she goes, I mean, I was not a good father seven years ago. And so my first experience starts. So I was in banking and, uh, during the time. And I, so I, I always say, if you listen to Joe Rogan, you know, you get into plant medicine. So I started listening to Joe Rogan <laughs> and, uh, they were talking about, you know, DMT and all this stuff. And I just started Started, I was listening while I was in corporate America. And I, I said to the universe, I was like, at some point I want to do ayahuasca. That's what mm -hmm. I wanted to do. And I just kind of let it sit in the back of my head. I left corporate America and um, I ended up doing DMT first, uh, dimethyltryptyline. And it was like, 
wild. And so that experience led me to the person who took me to Peru to do ayahuasca. Mm -hmm. And um, I did ayahuasca. And then within the same week ceremony, we did San Pedro. And mm -hmm. um, it was to say life changing, like it's not even a description. It was, um, it peeled me back. I mean, completely peeled me back. I had a lot of trauma as a kid, a lot of things that I was dealing with. And it was just the gateway for, to heal the broken little boy inside. So from there, um, the ayahuasca was an interesting journey. It was very spiritual for me, very, very Christ consciousness for me. The San Pedro is the one I fell in love with. When I did San Pedro, it was like, I had never felt more grounded. I had never felt more connected. And so, um, I've been going back every single year, twice a year since 2019. I just came back from a journey three weeks ago. I also use psilocybin as well. Um, yep. I, psilocybin is a powerful, powerful medicine if used sure correctly is. within the right environment. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, my experiences, uh, it, it is the reason why, the reason why I have such a deep relationship with God and Christ. Uh, and I, I use the word Yeshua, his real name is Yeshua. Um, and it's uh you said i think you, you brought something up earlier it's like what is this what is this that we're operating in what i believe it is through the plant medicine experience i had i believe that our soul comes into this physical body to transmute the darkness back to light so we come into this physical experience uh, we decided to stop in this little earthly plane within this energetic energetic field so that yeah. we can have five senses to experience like adam and eve were in the garden of eden there was a tree right in the middle right in the middle and they said don't eat from that tree which was as so above, so below the nervous system, like a little tree of life. So she ate from that tree and boom, she became physical and self-conscious. And so what we are here to do is to battle ourselves out of self-consciousness back to God consciousness and realize that we're all one. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what I feel. I feel that, that we are all one having a physical experience and that's where the separation comes from. It's like we all are pointing out our differences when we're actually pointing out it's us. It's like, like when, uh, you know, I'll share this, 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 uh, the, I have a, a really powerful spiritual coach. We're out in the middle of the forest and I tell the story all the time, but I was like, it changed my life. Cause I'm, I'm really on this crazy journey to studying spirituality. I, I just love it. And, and it never ends, man. It never ends. It gets like the, the rabbit hole gets deeper and deeper. And we're out in the middle of the forest, we're on some psilocybin. And I said, man, I stopped and I go, who is God, man? Who is God? And he, and he looks at me like, like this eerie through my soul in my eyes and says, you know who God is. He's like, you know who God is. And I'm like, I'm just struggling. Like I, I believe in God. I do. And he said, but you know who God is. And he said, let me ask you a question. He said, how? He goes, do you believe God and Christ are perfect? I said, yes, I believe Yeshua is perfect. And I believe God is perf perfection. And he said, okay, cool. He said, if you were perfect, how would you know that? And I was like, he goes, you know who God is. He said, what if, let's just pretend that you are God experiencing imperfection. How would you view humanity differently? And I was like, Phew. and then all the teachings of Christ came into my mind of, of he's like, you know, isn't the kingdom of heaven within you? Like he was teaching us this stuff. He was, he, he would left for 18 years. You're my friend now. If you left for 18 years, I'd be like, where the hell you been? But no Christians ask where he was at. Like there's so much documentation. If you read the gospel of 12, he talks about the plants. He talks about the, he talks about all stuff. He came back and was like, he f inverted everything. He took the old mm -hmm. Testament into the new Testament. Um, but yeah, it's been a beautiful journey. I mean, I'm a completely different human being and I'm not saying you have to do plant medicines. And I, sure. and you know, I always, I don't even recommend it to people because mm -hmm. it's not the medicine that the medicine doesn't do anything except expose you to what you need to work on. Yeah. So yeah, it's not all fun and games. I, I hope people understand that too. Because if you think you're going there for a fun time and, and you're going to yeah. have this, yes, you'll have a cool experience. Trust me, you will. But it may not be the easiest thing. And, the, you know, one of the things, like you just mentioned, you're three weeks post journey. Yeah, I think we're, uh, maybe it's going fast. Uh, six weeks, sorry, six weeks. Okay, six good. Weeks. Yeah. So, I mean, there's this pre journey phase, like, okay, I've signed mm -hmm. the, the virtual contract. I'm going in for this. Mm -hmm. For me, the first time I did it, the pre-journey phase was wild. Like some yeah. weird stuff started happening. Yeah. And you get there for your for your journey. You do your thing. And then it's like, oh, by the way, you need to stay here for about 48 hours or so after. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. have no contact with outside world, no social media. Keep your phone off. Only touch base with the loved ones who care for you. Because mm -hmm. now you're going through this reintegration phase. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I think so many people want to, you know, go online because now I don't know about you, but I see ads for all this stuff Everywhere. all over social media. 
right? Mm -hmm. It's very easy to get your hands on. Yeah. And I don't think that most people understand nor respect the medicine. Correct. And it's not something to be played with for sure. No. It's, and you gotta, it's way more yeah. advanced than, than we can handle. Yeah. And you got to be very careful who you pick doing it with uh, the, whoever is holding space for you. Like for example, the gentleman, I go the same person in Peru, sacred Valley every single year. And uh, he even says, he's like, I'm not a shaman. I'm just holding space for the medicine. He's like, I'm not a shaman. I'm not a healer. I'm not, he's like, I'm just here. So you don't go running through that field and jump off a bridge. You know, it's like, I'm here to, to walk you through, ask you questions, guide you. Um, and it, it has become extremely commercialized, which is sad. Mm -hmm. Um, because it takes the essence out of it. And so when it's, you have to be very careful with the intentions. Um, also too, like the people you're around with it, what are their intentions of doing the medicine? Cause there's a lot of, I call it spiritual psychosis where there's a lot of people who um, call themselves spiritual healers and all this stuff. And it's like, ugh, man, I, I, you gotta be careful with that type of stuff. Like I do the medicine. I would, I, you know, someone's like, would you ever want to be a shaman? Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely not, man. I'm trying to get my own shit together. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, just be very intentional. Be very careful. Um, Peru is a great place to go to. I don't go in the jungles. I go in the Sacred Valley. But um, if anybody goes to my Instagram and has it needs any, uh, it's Coach JV underscore. If you need any resources, I have very powerful, loving, high frequency resources in Peru that you can go to. Yeah, dude, I love it. Uh, I have a feeling, sir, that you and I can sit here and talk about this stuff all damn day. Yeah. Yes, that's awesome. Man. <laughs> this has been awesome. All right, look. We're at that point in time in the podcast right now. We got to wrap things up and I got to ask you the age old question that all podcast hosts ask, yep. where can we find you, JV? Yeah. So great. Thank you for allowing me to do that. So it, uh, easily, if you just type in coach JV, like junior varsity and Google, all my stuff will come up or three T warrior Academy in Google. Uh, we have it all hashtags. So, I mean, everything will come up, make it easy for you. And Sweet. so three T warrior Academy or coach JV and you'll find my stuff. Yeah, dude, I love it. I appreciate you coming in here today. We're going to have all this stuff dropped into the show notes as well. So when people come in and, and, and watch the podcast, they'll be able to click links and go right to your stuff. Perfect. Appreciate you, sir. Thank you, brother. Thank you for tuning in to the Step It Up Entrepreneur Podcast. Make sure you head over to stepitupentrepreneur.com and make sure you subscribe so you never miss an episode of the Step It Up Entrepreneur Podcast.